Stagnation is the enemy of freshness. Whether it's political stagnation, spiritual stagnation, emotional stagnation, academic stagnation, financial stagnation, stagnation is not a friend. I've been privileged to speak to over 150,000 people each year across North America, Europe, and in Africa. Reminding people that the potential within them is much more powerful than the problems that confront them. I'm Dr. Derry Sims, the voice against stagnation. Hello and welcome to Dr. Derry's show, The Voice Against Stagnation. This is second episode with Jared Silverstein. Jared Silverstein is the CEO and the founder of Puzzle Pieces Squared. I know he's going to explain that, but I'm bringing him back again because of the challenges he has faced in life and how he has turned negative into positive. And it's something that I want my viewers to hear. Jared, welcome once again. Oh, thanks for Glad having me again. In the studio. Uh, you are the CEO and the founder of the Puzzle Pieces Squared. Could you please tell us about this? Puzzle Pieces Squared, um, it's, it's really created because of my own children. Uh, Puzzle Piece is the national, basically the national object that represents autism because a puzzle piece, all of them are different. They all have different edges, different things. And that represents the fact of autism. Autism is so many different views of the spectrum, all the way from this side, all the way to the other side. You can have cognitive, all the way to social. So that's why the puzzle pieces. It's pieces and squared because I have two children. So it's near and dear to my heart. And I started that. That's where the name came from. The reason why I started it is because a couple years ago, um, you know, after my kids were diagnosed with autism and I was trying to, you know, create more awareness on a Facebook page and create more awareness of what autism was, I tried to think, how can I help, you know? How can I make a difference? Because my wife and I, through a couple years, we really felt stuck, you know? Like our kids, like every parent wants to do what's best for their children, but a lot of times, especially with special needs and especially autism, it's hard to figure out what that is yes. because they don't tell you. Correct. Because they're stuck in their own world mm. and they're dealing with their own things. So for them to communicate it back to you, it, it, it's like a maze. So there are a lot of nationally recognized uh, autism things out there. Autism Speaks is huge. But when I looked into what Autism Speaks was, it was a lot about research. It was a lot about how we can fix it later, okay, and what we can do for it in that regard. I was like, what can I do right now? Just like I do with my fitness studio, how can I make an impact right now? And I came up with this great idea that I was going to create this 501c3 foundation that was going to provide up to $7,500 grants to four families in the tri-state area that could help with insurance costs, ABA therapy, speech therapy, food therapy, respite care, camps, one-on-one -on -one aids, all this stuff that, that insurance doesn't pay for. Because insurance looks at it and says, well, you don't really need that. Well, they don't really know what you need, what would make your family better, what would be that missing piece that I could put back in that would bring your family whole. They don't know. So I was like, I can do that. So I came up with this great idea that I was going to provide to these families. And I started out small. I was like, how am I going to do this? What can I do? And I reached out to school districts and they were blown away. Like, you want to give us money? And I'm like, yeah, what do you need? And they needed iPads and computers and different things to help their sensory children. You know, people that need iPads to communicate. I mean, it's hard to imagine, but there are children out there that their only communication is iPads, okay, and computers. So it started out that way. And then people started finding out about me. And I, you know, I have women that, and mothers and families that reach out to me because they're lost. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, and they come to me and they're like, I want to make my son or daughter happy. I want to provide. I'm a single mom trying to provide. Insurance has dropped me. I have nothing. But my son needs ABA therapy to survive four times a week. Mm. What am I going to do? 
And they're like, we didn't even know you existed. Hmm. And I interview them and I meet them and I say, you know what? I can help them. Hmm. And I pay the whole bill. Wow. You know, I pay the whole bill for them to have therapy for their child for three months. And it doesn't seem like it would make a difference, but it does. Hmm. And then they reach out to other people who need help with you know, all the kid wants to do is go outdoors, but they can't afford to send the kid to camp because he needs a one-on-one -on -one aid to keep an eye on him because of his special needs. And I provide the cost for the one-on-one -on -one aid. There's things like this that people don't think about. You know, now, I started it, obviously, because I felt stuck. Yes. I was crushed. Yes. When, I, when my children were born, one, I found out my one son had autism before I found out my other one. Um, and they're twins. Um, so when I found out, I, I was crushed because yes, every yes. parent dreams, if they have a boy or girl, yes. what that childhood is going to be. They're going to play a sport. I'm gonna, they're going to go to their first prom. They're going to do all this like you think about yes, that. Yeah. And when you're told that you have these trials and tribulations that you didn't know about, that th life throws its curveball at you, you look at it and you're like... Well, now what do I do? Mm. And one of my uh, great clients, but also my kid's pediatrician said to me, and I never forget it, you need to mourn the perfect child first. Mm. And what that means is you need to get out of your head what, you know, what raising these children is going to be like, because that's not their reality. Mm. Their reality is different. And that's not a negative. It's just you have to adapt. And you have to move on. So I did. I mourned what I thought things were going to be like. And all of a sudden, I realized it's going to be therapies in home, out of home. It's going to be different classes in school. It might be different future. But it doesn't have to be a negative. Mm. You know? And these, these children, they feed on your energy. Mm -hmm. And if you're negative, they feed on that. So what I do is I provide hope to these families. I have been told numerous times, it's a very sad, sad thing, it makes me cry every time, but I helped a family last year. He needed sensory output, so I provided a trampoline outside for him to jump on, mm -hmm. okay? This child drew me a picture of a trampoline, brought it in on Father's Day to me, mm -hmm. and I opened it, and it's a picture, and it's a son, and the mother says to me, you are the sun in our lives. Oh. To make a difference like that mm. is, it's better than anything. It's oh, better than any job. It's, it is so rewarding that I can help these people. You know, I just built a tree house because um, once uh, one of these children that I helped doesn't do well in social situations and he needs just somewhere he could go outside. Yeah. So I, I, I build him a tree house that now he can go into and that's his own personal heaven. Mm. These things are amazing. And a lot of people, you know, before I meet them, they're down on their luck. And when they do talk to me, they're, they're crying and they're emotional and they think I'm an angel that was sent to them, you know, um, to make their lives better. And I said, I'm not an angel. I'm just a helping hand. I am here to help and I hope you pay it forward and maybe you tell three other people that you see on a regular basis that there's hope out there and that there's a different direction that your family can go. And life is about trials and tribulations, it really is. But it's how you handle them. And these families deal with things that people in atypical family situations can't even imagine. So that's really why I started it. I wanted to make a difference. And the other thing is, how many people donate to charities and don't know where the money goes? Correct. I hate that. I literally hate that. That I can raise all this money and I can give it to a foundation that pays for salaries and advertising. Correct. Everything about me, it's volunteer. Correct. I do it all volunteer. So all my donors and everybody that supports me every year at my huge gala every year, everybody that does that knows that the money is making a difference in these families' lives. These families come and they give speeches on what it has meant to them. And all of a sudden, these people open their hearts because it's amazing if you know how you're making a difference. Correct. And, and it, to me, I, I, ever since I did it's a lot of work. It's a lot, a lot of, work, of work, 
but I would never, ever not do it. And I love fitness and what I do with that. But when people ask me now my legacy, I want to be Puzzle Pieces Squared. Wow. You know, I, this is touching to me because I can understand. I don't have this experience, but as a father, I can understand when it is your own child, not to talk of children, two kids. And that is pretty touching. Um, one thing that is so, uh, uh, one thing I want to say here, um, especially for my viewers, is to look at the positive, <coughs> the positive uh, from your own angle. Because I can't imagine how you put all, you know, you took all this negative out there, you crushed it and it became a plus. You know, what's supposed to be bringing you down, you know, is one of the things that you are not using, not only to lift yourself up, you're also lifting others up. You know what I mean? And that is the good thing. And that's the reason why I wanted doing this show for the second episode, because a lot of people out there, they are often, they are going through very difficult times and it, it appears nobody's there for them. They've done this, they don't know what next to do. And when they come out, instead of people trying to understand them and their situation, people again berate them, mock them. You know what I mean? They go back discouraged as if this earth is unbearable. You know what I mean? And I can see you doing that and I see what you're doing. And you, people call you angel. For me, I agree with them that you're an angel, if you don't mind. but. I think so, because what, that's how, what angels, angels should look like, helping people in need, pushing people up. People are down, you lift them up, you encourage them, you empower them. But more interesting is that I hear you see, say you spend your money helping these people. And a lot of non-profit organizations, that's the truth, they get a lot of money. You know what I mean? And they pay salary, like you said, fat salaries. In, transportation and all those in the cost of operations at the end of the day the money or the fund does not really get to the recipient but that's different with you and i love that and it's something that i really want to want you to keep doing because i know it's going to take you places where you're going to solve a lot of problems so let's start uh well, first question i want to ask you is you know when it comes to autism i know there's a lot of research going on the out there do you think the society, the government, they're doing enough? It's, a, it's, a, it's almost like a loaded question because there are services out there if you advocate, if you're an advocate for your child. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people do not have the time to be an advocate for their child mm -hmm. the way that you need to be if you have an autistic child. All right, most families have uh, only single income because if they, if if the husband and wife work, mm -hmm. one of them has to quit their job mm -hmm. because they have to be a twenty four seven correct advocate correct. for their child. Correct. The other thing is, public school systems, unless they are really shown that they need to do it, mm -hmm. they don't want to spend the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so. It, it's, it's a lot of rigmarole to get through mm -hmm. where you're constantly fighting for your child. Mm -hmm. Now, if you keep fighting, at the end of that rope is the gold. You will hit what you need for your child, but so many people get so discouraged. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the school system mm -hmm. part of it. Insurance, because autism has become such a bigger umbrella, mm -hmm. um, to give you an idea, in the school system, my one son qualified in the umbrella. Mm -hmm. My other son was on the line, mm -hmm. okay? Which meant that there aren't as many services available. There aren't as many things that these, these therapy places and stuff are willing to do mm -hmm. because they don't look at it the same way. Because insurance doesn't want to spend money. Mm -hmm. They don't want to keep spending. And now autism is such a big umbrella mm -hmm. that you know, and now this could be because there's so much more awareness now because everybody remembers growing up and you're in a, in a classroom and there was that child that wasn't quite, you just couldn't put your finger on it. Correct. Right? Chances are mm -hmm. that child had some form of a sensory disorder. Uh, might not have been autism, but it could have been something. Mm -hmm. um, now, because there's so much more early intervention mm -hmm. and testing, you know, they're so quick to say, 
that your child has this or not Mm -hmm. because they're worried about being sued or they're worried about they're not doing what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. The insurance now has so many people coming at them for services, Mm -hmm. they don't want to pay it. Correct. Um, So my thing is if you look at all these things, the services are out there. Mm -hmm. The contacts are out there. Mm -hmm. There aren't a lot of my foundations Mm -hmm. out there. Most of them are bigger and they're about research. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, research is important. Mm-hmm. We need research, mm-hmm. okay, or else we won't know, Correct. you know, 50 years from mm-hmm. now what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's more important now to try to figure out what is out there in your area that can help you. And my foundation does that as well. We have some people that come to us and they're looking for help. And, you know, my foundation and I, we look at it and we're like, that's not really what we do. Mm-hmm. Okay, but then we say we direct them. Mm -hmm. We direct them to different services, to different places Mm -hmm. where they can get help. Mm -hmm. So it is out there. You just have to do the work and it's very stressful. It's a lot of headaches. A lot of people get very ill trying to take care of their children. Mm -hmm. My wife was one of them. Mm -hmm. So I understand it and I live it and I see it. Mm -hmm. But if you keep your your eyes focused Mm -hmm. at the task at hand, Mm -hmm. you can get what you need to because it is out there. Mm -hmm. It's just extremely Mm -hmm. difficult to find. Interesting. Now, you know, a lot of stigma comes with when it comes to kids living with disability or family living with disability. How do you, I mean, because a lot of people, they've not been able to overcome it the way you overcame it. I'm, I'm positive that you've overcome, overcome it because I could see the energy, I could see how you, 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 you move towards a positive direction, you know, with all these challenges that, you know, life throws or are thrown at, at, at you. Now, the question is, how do you, how, what will you tell people who, you know, they see this stigma and uh, it kind of belittles them. They feel belittled. Let me let me use that word. And then because a lot of people, you know, make jest of the kids or mock them or something like that. What will you tell people like that? Because I see that you have overcome it. I think one of the most important things I did is I only focused on my family and the people that mattered to my family. And I didn't pay attention to any outside influence. Mm. Um, I used to be the parent that would be embarrassed Mm. when my son would do something Mm. or have some sort of autistic episode, Mm. you know, um, at Target. And I was one of those people that in the beginning, all my stress was coming from because, oh, my God, everybody's going to look at me. They're going to think I'm doing something wrong. Am Mm. I a bad parent? Mm. You know, and then I realized. They don't know me. They don't know Okay, you. they don't know me. Correct. Just like I don't know them. Correct. Everybody's fighting a battle you don't know about. Mm. Everyone in life. Mm. Okay, so I, I, I think that was the big thing. Okay? And then it was trying to surround yourself mm-hmm. with the people that understand, mm-hmm. the people that are non judgmental. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying everybody's judgmental because judgmental is a negative connotation word. Right. Okay? I don't believe that they're judgmental, I believe they're scared. Mm. I believe they don't have enough knowledge and they don't know how to react. Correct. Okay, they don't know. I've had friends that I've lost because they didn't know how to react around my kids. They didn't know what was right. Mm. They they thought like that it was awkward for them mm. and you know, it made them uncomfortable. Correct. And because it made them uncomfortable, judgmental is not what they were. They were scared. Correct. They were scared. Mm. Just like my wife and I were, mm. but we were in it living it. Correct. And they were on the outside looking mm. in. So I think that that it's not that people are negative or are judgmental or are negative towards you. I mm. think it's an unknown mm. and people are afraid mm-hmm. of the unknown. Mm-hmm. And I think the best way to help people that are afraid of the unknown mm-hmm. is educate. Mm-hmm. Educate, teach, show them, you know, the joys. Um, I say this all the time, every time at my gala, we have situations that bring us to tears and then we have situations that we're laughing our ass off mm-hmm. because because they bring so much joy and miracle Correct. on a regular basis Correct. and cherish those miracles mm-hmm. don't only look at the mm-hmm. at the at the mm-hmm. at the trials mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. cherish the happy times mm-hmm. focus on the miracles mm-hmm. focus on what makes your child and your situation a beautiful beautiful miracle wow you got it right close the doors against every negative. It's very push hard against negatives. That's so important. Now, um, another question I would like to ask you is this. You know, 
a lot of people get to know about your foundation because you will need a lot of help moving forward or more help. Now, and I don't think it's weakness to ask for help. No. Very good. Um, the question I want to ask is, what are those things that you actually need like now? Because now we are in a, this is a live TV um, show and I want, like, what, what, what do you need that you think that people can help with? Not just because of you, but for others that you are also supporting. What would that be? I think what the, the most important with Puzzle Pieces Squared is awareness. It's awareness that we're out there. Every family I run into or I help, one of the first things they say to me is, I didn't know you were out there. Where did you come from? I think that that is key. Getting it out there that there are, and there are other smaller ones as well, that there is a few local foundations that are out there trying to make a difference. And it doesn't have to be those big corporations. And I'm not taking anything away from the corporations. They are important, but they are important in other in other ways. Mm -hmm. We are important in what we do for you right now. Mm -hmm. You need help right now, we're here for you. Mm -hmm. So I think awareness, mm -hmm. getting us out there to the world mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. Exposure, mm -hmm. uh, uh, media appearances, different newspaper articles, mm -hmm. different things that we can just showcase mm -hmm. who we are mm -hmm. and how to get out there. Okay, that's very, very important. Uh, now, we are coming towards the end of this show, okay? How, we, how can people reach you? Do you have a website? Do you have an email about the, uh, the Puzzle Pieces Squared? I do. Um, I have a, um, a foundation page. Mm -hmm. It's Puzzle Pieces Squared, all spelled out, mm -hmm. .org. Mm -hmm. um, and you go there, and there's a Contact Us page there. There's all about my family. There's all about the nine families in the three school districts that we've helped already, mm -hmm. and all about what our mission is and mm -hmm. what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Um, I also have a Facebook page as well, Puzzle Pieces Squared. Um, and those are the two, and Instagram, same thing. Mm -hmm. um, they are all ways to get in touch and really see what we're out there doing. But I really suggest that people that want to know more about Puzzle Pieces Squared, go to that website, mm -hmm. check it out, go to the P2 family section, mm -hmm. and really read these stories. Mm -hmm. And it, it's so emotional. Yeah, it is it such is. an emotional thing. But it, you can't read these stories and not mm -hmm. want to help and make a difference gotcha. and spread the word. Wow. So I would like you to, you know, look straight in the camera and talk to my audience. Encourage them. A lot of people are, like I told you, they go through a very difficult time. I meet people who go through difficult times. Sometimes I am powerless to help them in terms of maybe what they need. But I do offer positive words, you know, just to lift them up. Sometimes it's not enough, but it's just part of it. So I think if you do that for my audience today, I think that would be cool. I guess I would say it this way. Life works in mysterious ways. And you never know when something's going to go back in your direction. But what I try to tell everybody in any trial and tribulation situation is just look at it and know that hope's around the corner. Puzzle Pieces Squared is there to provide support. You can reach out to us. We can, you know, put you in a certain direction that maybe could help you with services and resources. Or we might be able to even help somebody that you know with some sort of grant or some way to help you. What Puzzle Pieces Squared is, is we're filling out that piece that's missing in your family and we're bringing you back whole. Thank you so much. I know you talked about the tattoo. Can you, can you tell my viewers what the tattoo is all about, if you don't mind? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so everything with me, I live and breathe, and I wear this on my arm every day, and it's an Asian dragon that stands for Strong and Powerful Family Searching for the Key to Autism. Wow. I wear this every day because every day I'm trying to figure out ways to make people who are in these situations better. Thank you, Jared. Absolutely. You Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Thank you for that. having me. We have come to the end of this show. I'm sure you have uh, enjoyed listening to Jared Silverstein, um, you know, with such a compelling story and with a positive heart to transform lives. I appreciate your listening. Until next time, see you. Bye-bye.